Okay, so now welcome to part 5 of this session. Uh, here you know I am going to discuss about few issues that uh, you can face you know when mother is breastfeeding uh, there are few problems that uh, we experience in the field and uh, I do want you to kind of uh, know uh, and understand what are the solutions for those problems ok. So starting from 45 points of counselling uh, first thing you know in cross cradle hole because it is not a hole which has been kind of uh, uh, you know practiced a lot in the field uh, most of these mothers they do not know this hold you know to be to be frank. Uh, so I do recommend that uh, you know to teach this mother as early as possible. So during pregnancy uh, say in last trimester of pregnancy if you can uh, show this tutorial uh, two tutorials of cross cradle hold and latching not only show them this two tutorials uh, but also kind of keep a breast uh, model. So, you know you can uh, make this breast model we will also kind of create a tutorial on this how to make it you can make it uh, you know you can also use socks uh, put some cloth in it and you can be very innovative there are some tutorials or some uh, YouTube videos available on uh, how to make uh, artificial breast and then also you know buy like a really uh, good baby doll like this you know uh, make sure that it is at least 19 uh, inches you know 19 to 20 inches so that is long enough do not buy very short ones because then it will be difficult for you to uh, kind of teach mothers how to you know uh, uh, kind of put the baby in a right correct position ok. So, here uh, problem with uh, you know uh, problem that you will face in the field is because mothers do not know this technique. So, it takes a little bit longer to train them ok because what they have to do they have to unlearn what they have learned before you know and of course if the cradle hold is working fine and if you can get that correct latch with cradle hold please go ahead there is no doubt about it please go ahead. But you know what we have seen in a lot of the studies that we have done at a district level you know at in, in our program also that if the cross cradle was whole definitely you know the neck extension was uh, much better you know all that uh, I will explain to you uh, what were the issues that we were facing with cradle hold uh, you know and then then uh, then you will understand that why I am pressing on cross cradle hold so much you know. So, uh, what happens in cross cradle, uh, cradle hold actually that is a traditional hold. So, the reason uh, children were not gaining good amount of weight in my opinion is that most of the time uh, because the baby is held with the same hand ok. So, here uh, what happens a baby does not have any and baby would come like this this is how most of the time uh, babies are held in a cradle hold ok. Now, what happens? Uh, here in this position baby's neck is kind of bent forward because baby do not have any space to move the uh, head backward. So, what is happening here kind of neck is getting uh, pressed downward because this, this elbow is kind of blocking baby's extension of neck ok. So, in this position what I generally saw that baby had a uh, flexion of neck ok. Uh, second thing what I not noticed that in this position because uh, you know if you look at it most of the time the upper lip goes more in the mouth because in this position the nose is much higher uh, uh, when it comes to nipple than the lower. So, here when the baby opens the mouth more of a upper area goes into the mouth than the lower. If you really want to have a lower area in the mouth what you need to do with this cradle hole you have to really bring the uh, baby like this you know and allow the baby to kind of uh, you know get that head backward and this position is very very awkward for the mother. You can imagine see this is this is the position uh, and another thing is here the, the legs are not supported ok. Ne uh, head is also not supported it is just sitting on the on the uh, angle of the you know of the elbow. So, this is probably there are few more reasons that you know we felt that uh, it was not comfortable for the baby and the mother to be in this position. So, what happens is again if you are using the a cross cradle hold here still look at this. Now, you have a full body uh, kind of support you know uh, beautiful extension of the neck ok extension of the head 
and then you maybe can latch on beautifully okay so this is this is how uh, this is a beautiful that's what we notice in our program you know that mother once she learned properly she had lot more confidence and then she could uh, baby was much more relaxed you know baby could uh, get milk just within few minutes 5 6 7 minutes sometime you know the latch is good uh, and if they were hungry you know uh, the milk transfer was happening because we could see amazing weight gain you know almost 50 to 60 grams uh, weight gain per day okay so here again you know to from to unlearn from this you know to this it and what uh, again in cradle hold most of the mothers they hold the breast like this okay more of a c shape so the thumb comes at 12 o'clock and uh, finger uh, lower fingers come I in the you know index finger come at 6 o'clock and here in this position what happens uh, the way baby holds the breast is like this so when you suppose eating a vada pav or burger and if you are holding if your fingers are perpendicular to the lip so this is your lip okay this is your lip and now your fingers are perpendicular not parallel but perpendicular then you will not be able to have a big bite okay so in this position if you look at uh, you know i want you to observe those mothers breastfeeding and see how they breastfeed first always observe so that you know where they are going wrong so in this position you know babies are basically diagonal most of the time okay and then mother is holding the breast in a c shape so here the lips lips are not parallel to baby's mother's fingers uh, lips are perpendicular to baby's finger in this position most of the time nipple goes in the mouth okay and maybe a little bit of upper areola but uh, we I hardly ever saw lower good lower areola latch uh, in this position okay so okay so that is your uh, one first point is to make mother unlearn and the best time to make her understand this concept is not after delivery because after delivery it's already you know she is going through so much of all this hormonal problems you know pain a uh, lot of uh, this people around her nurses are telling her a few things doctors are saying some things you know mother mother and mother-in-law will say that oh you're not getting enough milk ye karo, wo karo, you know she's so confused so the best time to teach her is not post delivery the best time to teach her is during uh, pregnancy during last trimester let her understand what are these 45 points let her understand the concept okay of what different points that we are mentioning and then let her practice on the baby doll and the breast model let her practice it okay once she delivers of course uh, you know as i mentioned in my other tutorials that uh, breast crawl is important you know uh, breast crawl during uh, cesarean section is important so all that will be taken care of by doctors and nurses but if mothers know all these points she will demand for it she has to demand if you don't demand doctors will not do it so tell her to demand for it tell her to tell doctors that i want to breastfeed as soon as baby is born you know tell her that she needs support uh, most of the time you know team they do not know this cross cradle and 45 points so she has to be uh, what I recommend is to not only teach her but teach the whole family okay so teach grandmother like her mother-in-law mother you know husband or sister-in-law whoever sister whoever uh, are going to be there with her they all need to learn because uh, believe me after delivery it is them who will be helping mothers ok. If sisters and doctors will, are there if they know proper technique I will be very happy but unfortunately we uh, you know uh, this technique has not been taken up by many doctors ok. So anyway so the first point is as I mentioned that mother has to understand during uh, before delivery after delivery then she is going to be there in the hospital for say 24 to 48 hours. Okay. So, I do recommend that every time that she, uh, she kind of breastfeed, uh, she needs to remember those 45 points. So, I kind of recommend that she should have those 45 point uh, PDF, those uh, charts with her so that you know even if she does not have any support, she can just look at those charts and remember what she has learnt during pregnancy and she can follow those points and she can practice on the baby. Um, also if mothers and <coughs> mother-in-laws if they know uh, this 45 points they can help her you know they can free, uh, they can burp the baby they can you know uh, help mother with rest with different hold sideline hold <coughs> other hold okay so that's important all right so now uh, 
couple of points that you will see that mother will struggle with ok. Uh, this is one point which you will definitely see that mothers do not uh, kind of tuck baby's uh, uh, you know kind of legs in the armpit. So, uh, make sure that you know you teach her completely uh, you know the example that I give for this particular point is that you know women they lot of time when they go out they, they carry this clutch uh, purse clutch purse it is just a small purse and they, they hold it very tight you know. So, I always give this example that if you are holding the clutch would you hold the clutch like this or would you let that clutch fall down and they will say no, 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 no you know I mean women are very kind of possessive about the purses you know. So, uh, I always say the same thing I said if you are so possessive about your clutch this is your baby you do not want the baby to slide down. So, I tell mothers to hold the legs very tightly ok and then put it in uh, uh, under arm you know and then hold it tightly and then let that hip little bit sit in front like this. So, that is uh, hip is sitting. So, in this position what will happen that uh, legs will not slip because if it is not kind of tucked properly you know slowly slowly that leg will slip down ok. So, I tell mothers to make baby sit. So, if suppose baby is sitting like this so this would be the position. So, if I just pull the baby out this is the position that baby is sitting ok. And this is how or normally also we would love to sit and eat right. Uh, we want to kind of be as comfortable as position uh, in this position. So, here if I just put this baby back again ok and then just let that baby sit. Oh yeah, so, this is this is the position that I am yeah this is the position now baby sitting ok. And one more point which is again I see all the time is fingers, fingers are always kind of put like this. Please remember that fingers should be kind of uh, at the back of the uh, you know ears on that mastoid bone ok. So, this is important and one more thing which I always see that baby is brought so far kind of lateral towards this side you know uh, that whenever baby opens the mouth I to have the breast in the mouth baby has to bend the neck forward ok. So, do not do this do not basically bend uh, you know do not allow baby to bend the neck forward ok. So, in this position what you want to do you tell mother to bring the baby little bit towards the other side this way. Here in this position when the nose is little bit lower than the nipple you know then you can basically try to lift the neck forward ok uh, here this way and then we can open the mouth and then the lower part of the areola can go in the mouth. So, this is very very important that where you are bringing the uh, again I am going to repeat because many times what I see when they bring the baby to the breast this uh, neck is completely either straight like this or it is like this like this ok either bent forward or it is straight that is wrong both this position of the neck is wrong. You want the neck of the position neck a uh, neck of the baby to be in a uh, slightly extended position slightly in other thing. So, for that you will have to pull the baby more towards the other side of the where the, where the legs are ok and then it would be easy for the baby to extend the neck ok. So, here then baby is coming from lower down and then attaching ok alright. Then uh, third point which I always see the problem is baby is kind of brought correctly, but mother tends to have a C shape she tends to hold the breast by C shape and this is so common because she is taught that way she has seen everybody doing that. Now, this will completely kind of uh, you know allow baby to have only nipple not the lower or latch. So, remember okay, not to hold C shape in C shape your you know your fingers are not parallel to baby's lips in this position ok because in this position the lips are vertical ok. So, you will have to put your fingers either up in a vertical position ok like this or in a lower down uh, in this position and make sure that this, this uh, dip of the uh, U shape is more at 6 o'clock. So, bring your hand closer to you. So, then it will be easier if it is like this if it is kind of extended then what will happen that, that uh, uh, you know your dip is going more towards 5 o'clock ok on left hand side ok. So, just bring your uh, hand little bit closer. So, here I am it is over here I am bringing it closer and then only the tip not not the whole thing only the tip and it should be 3 fingers away from the nipple ok only the tip and it is it is exactly you it should not be V shape it should not be V ok. It should not be full uh, breast holding the you know you I do not want 
full finger to be on the breast, just the tip, not the full finger like this, okay? Not like this, this becomes V. It should be just a tip and bend beautifully in a round shape, okay, and pressing the breast, okay? Because otherwise, you know, that uh, finger will come in the in the way uh, and baby will not be able to have a good areola latch, low areola latch, okay? All right, so that is done. Now, third time, third thing which I always see is, you know, when mother is kind of holding the breast uh, and then she keeps holding it, you know. So, just tell her that once the latch is good, you examine the latch, she forgets to examine. This is another point which is very important. You tell her, you examine the latch, three, four points that she has to see. First point, how big is the mouth? Okay. Second point is uh, whether uh, lower lower area latch is there or not. So that for that she has to see where is the lower lip of the baby, which is at the at the border of lower area and on the breast. Third thing is both lip and the chin should be embedded into breast. She should not be able to see it because if if she is seeing that uh, uh, lip and the chin, that means just too far. Okay. And the another thing what I want you to do is once that is done, then she has to bring that hand and put it around. Do not leave this hand over here from the neck, otherwise baby will detach and then again will become a nipple latch. Okay. So, that is important. Uh, remember that it has to be, you know, just baby uh, mother holding the hip of the baby. Okay, like this. All right. So this is done. Uh, These are the skills that I see a lot of issue with. Uh, and if you teach her proper skills, and if you know uh, what uh, you know what problems that uh, you may face in the field, and if you can, if you know the solution, it'll be much easier for uh, mother uh, and the baby to have a proper breastfeeding success. Okay. And there are some content uh, that you already know. Uh, do ask mothers because uh, if you don't ask them or if you do not teach them, you will not know what the issue is. Okay? So, the questions as I said that how many times she is feeding during daytime, does she know early hunger cues or not. So, instead of daytime, I ask about 24 hours because a lot of time you know the daytime becomes very kind of confusing. So, I do ask mothers in 24 hours how many times you feed. 10 to 12 times, night time out of that, night time how many times she feeds, so I recommend at least 3 to 4 times, you know. Uh, another thing about the hind milk, uh, do spend good 10 minutes talking about hind milk, okay. Do spend 10 minutes uh, explaining how to express breast milk, breast compressed release, it is called PCR, remember PCR, press compressed release, okay. Look for whether the milk is watery or thick. Okay, watery milk will uh, basically if mother is giving only watery milk that baby will not put on weight, okay, and then she will, baby will pass urine because water is going in, you know, but the thick milk that hind milk, fatty milk is not going in, okay, so that baby will have difficulty putting on weight. So, do think about those important points uh, that why baby is not putting on weight, okay. Uh, another thing also I see a lot of issues in the field is they do not breastfeed on both sides. You know, uh, or they feel they would feed on both sides, but little bit over here, little bit over there. So they're getting only f four milk. Uh, you know, in both the breast, the babies are not getting high milk. So tell her to completely empty on one side. Examine whether she has uh, four milk or high milk uh, given completely. Then go on the other side. Okay. Many times, even if baby is fed on other side, she baby can still feed on the third third time again on the uh, first spread. Uh, there is another point which uh, I want to discuss is uh, alternate your breast. For example, suppose in first feeding you give this side first and then you give this, okay. After hour and a half baby wake up, baby woke up, then what you want to do is to feed on this side first and then go on this side. So, you alternate uh, because what happens when you feed, when the baby feeds uh, first few minutes that sucking is very hard. So, that, that breast will get empty very fast, okay. So, what we do is we tell mothers alternate, first time give this first, then in second feeding give this, then a third feeding give this side first, again so alternate, okay. So, both side get equal stimulation, otherwise a lot of time what happens, we see mothers who just, a lot of time they come and tell us that, oh baby prefers to breastfeed on right side only, okay. So, we tell them no, because left side is difficult, you take you teach baby how to feed on left side first. So, when baby is hungry you know they will learn, they will cry but you know you have to teach them. So, in those condition we tell mothers to try to feed on the difficult side first 
you know let baby learn and then she can basically alternate ok. So, that is another important point which is really important and uh, uh, you know there are other things about uh, nose. So, nose is another thing which a lot of mothers are very very afraid of ok to not freak out. To, if you if you freak out then mothers will freak out you know you teach them that your baby's nose is getting pressed like this not like this. So, you nothing to worry about, but if you are worried then you can just kind of uh, you know your suppose baby's nose is getting pressed you just lift up the neck backward little bit like this. So, the nose kind of comes off the breast and the chin will go more deeper into the breast ok. But what I notice in our, our technique we from beginning we bring the baby like this ok. Uh, if we bring the baby directly immediately like this say in a, in a extended neck position you know then we do not have a problem of uh, nose suppression or nose compression at all ok. Here if baby is brought like this or baby is brought like this in this situation the nose will get compressed. So, again observe the baby and the mother and if you know the nose is getting compressed that means baby is not lacking properly, baby is landed just directly on the breast straight like it not like this, it babies come just like this or maybe like this ok. So, these are a few points if you remember I think you will do well. Uh, again if you uh, kind of face any problem in the field uh, feel free to contact us and we will uh, will be more than happy to answer your questions ok. Thank you. Thank you.